most of my career has been in, as Kate said, in working in youth programs, developing youth programs and creative technologies for young people to create and express their ideas. But I was always interested in when emotions come up in that and the whole role of emotions in motivation. And one of the ways I saw that is um, this excitement that Reed said, I've always been interested in, you can be sitting there, say in a workshop or an after school space and other people are working on say, like the Scratch computer program that I helped develop along with a big other team and they're not sure what they want to do and then suddenly you don't even have to hear what they say but suddenly they get all this energy and the, you know when they say the light bulb goes off I think it's that energy that you see when someone gets an idea and how do you really help support that this is a drawing by a young person that happened in Scratch that I came across but what about like Reed said sometimes your idea wait it's not turning out the way I thought <laughs> where I imagined and you reach some kind of frustration either with your own self or say like I've done a lot of the work with the programmable Lego where you build something out of Lego and program it to move, but it often falls apart. And I was really interested to see that some young people when it fell apart, they would say, um, oh, never mind, forget it. I don't, I don't wanna do this. You know, I put all this work into it. And then at other times you'd see young people say, oh, that's okay, now I learned how to do it, now I can make it really strong. So they almost took it on as a challenge and it was okay. And it was like, how do we help more young people when they meet that moment of frustration to really keep that energy going with their idea? So I went back actually 20 years after my master's to get a PhD to really learn about emotion and motivation. And then for my postdoc, actually right after I started my PhD, I went to the uh, research conference on child development and a lot of the things I wasn't so excited about because they seemed far removed from the youth program context, but then I happened across Reed's presentation and I was so excited because he was talking about research that was about to come out in child development about this theater program. So it was not only like in a real world setting, but it was also talking about how do young people learn about how to deal with emotions in a youth program and through this experience and what is the role of the leader in helping facilitate that. But it was really that experience of like the highs and lows. And then he, he had this line about, he and the others who um, worked on it wrote that um, maybe each youth program has kind of different cycles of ups and downs, kind of predictable episodes that the leaders start preparing for. And that really intrigued me. So I went after I got my PhD to work with Reed to start studying and see these are some of the emotions as part of this larger project. And again here, programs and staff from the University of Minnesota along with Illinois um, and others working to interview youth about, along with all the other skills, leadership, teamwork, responsibility, also to ask questions about have you experienced these emotions in the program and what was your experience like? What did you learn from it? Um, if you learned anything, what was it? How did you learn that? What was the leader's role? So it's this really rich set of responses from youth and then also from leaders. And um, again, the reason this is important, as Reed said, I was just so excited when I saw this not come out not that long ago from the National Research Council um, to say that to acknowledge emotions in their executive summary <laughs> about managing emotions. And like Reed said, people are starting to recognize how key this is. So among the inter intrapersonal skills, the capacity to manage one's behavior and emotions to achieve one's goals is an important skill for life and for work. And that youth programs are great settings to learn about this in. And um, so uh, adolescence, again, is a key period. Um, we've seen in the research that it's a time, and a lot of people focus on the heightened emotions that adolescents have, but I'm really excited again to work with Reed and others who are saying, but along with the heightened emotions are also heightened abilities to reflect and to think strategically. So it's a key time for us to help in that process. And again, I think one key way to help is through the program structure, through experiencing it and helping through that. And just an example of something that I've learned from the interviews with the teens that we've done is this value of worry. Again, in a lot of our programs, it's trying to 
helping young people realize their ideas, and I haven't really thought about worry as a key part of that. But what we've seen by looking across programs is, actually I've started to see it as a real learning opportunity, and the teens are telling us that. For example, this one who said, it's good in a way if you worry, you know that you care about something. In a way, it makes you want to work harder because you prove yourself like, yeah, I'm worried, yeah, I'm scared, yeah, I'm freaking out, but I can still do this thing. So this experience of learning that, and it's through these experiences of doing presentations, having deadlines, worrying about how people are going to receive your film, or getting ready to work with a group of youth you've never worked on. So these new experiences and deadlines and things they really care about that get you worried, but also give you that opportunity when they realize, wait a minute, afterwards it worked out, even though I was worried. This is what a lot of the youth say. They, didn't, like, they thought because they were worried this is going to be a disaster, but actually they worried and they were able to get through it. So that's a huge thing that they learn. Um, it motivates you. Like if you're worried about something, not to worry about it. Just work hard so you don't have to worry about it. So just keep working on it. A lot of these messages from the leaders and through their experience and talking to previous youth in the program. And the teens were also realizing this idea that came from that the National Research Council is realizing this is an important skill. It's a really pretty useful life skill. I'm pretty sure sometime in the real world you're going to have to work under pressure. So having this experience in the youth program starts to make them realize I can be worried and I can work through it. Um, the uses of emotion, there's a lot of research, and again, a lot of it is the more recent. I think it's really exciting how much research now is going into the fact that they're adaptive, and people think of that as just fight or flight, but we've adapted emotions to be social beings. It's not just that kind of um, survival in the moment, you know, but it's also a lot of more subtle and complex, like, um, Reed was talking about uses of emotion to focus our attention, to motivate action, provide feedback. This again, this learning, I can learn from a situation and cause reflection if we know how to deal with them in that way. And then the work by Fredrickson and others on positive emotion, that's newer research as well, but on like broadening our awareness, kind of uh, building connections, starting to be more aware. When I'm in a good mood, I start looking around. <laughs> what, what's in the world? Who are the people around me? And that rewarding positive action of like, I feel good when I take on these responsibilities and I help others. And then that motivates me. We're working right now on what young people said about pride in these programs. And they start to realize, oh, this is a real motivation. I feel proud of my work. And now I want to work harder in the future. Um, this, These questions, again, that are but to, it's not that easy, right? You don't just right away feel worry and go, oh great, this inspires me to work harder. It's this process of reflecting. How am I feeling? Even to realize I'm feeling that, um, why am I feeling that way? How can I express it? How can I handle it? And this is where the leaders, we heard from the youth, often, most often they said, I learned through this experience. Um, but then some of them recognized that that experience came through the program and also the leader played a key role. Sometimes it was just that believing, seeing, okay, I'm worried, but the leader looks like they're confident in me, you know, so I can keep going. But to really see those emotions as opportunities for learning and also connecting with each other. Um, and this, this builds on work. The, the term emotion coaching comes from Gottman um, and other colleagues who talked about that originally for a, parents talking with their children to coaching them to see emotions as learning opportunities when they talked to some parents saw them already saw emotions as learning opportunities and then when we were talking to the youth and the leaders we started to really hear from them Similar things that was found previously in the parenting research, we found in the youth programs that leaders were playing this role of helping youth see the emotions as learning opportunities. And I'll talk about three general ways. One way was really to help them reflect on the situation. And this includes labeling it, talking about it. Here's an example, talking to a leader was saying, noticing something's going on with the kid. And often this is put in the category. I'm not saying, um, you know, sometimes in 
traditional school settings, it's just about behavior, but now more and more people in schools and out of schools are realizing this is an emotional situation. And so rather than just saying, come on, keep working, this leader said, hey, what happened today? You're usually this way in the situation, you know, more motivated. Today, you was down low. Talk to me, what's going on? Because I've seen you just wasn't in it today. So rather than just telling them, come on, get your motivation, it's like checking in, helping them reflect what was going on today, helping them realize how they were feeling, and helping them be able to talk about it, have, it, have words for it. That's a key, key step. Um, another step is helping them think about different ways to handle it. And what's so interesting that we keep talking about is there's handling the situation and handling the emotion, and often it's not separate. And actually in the research on emotion, they call it emotion regulation, but on managing, one of the key ways to help constructively deal with emotions is changing the situation. So they're inextricably linked. Um, but considering different strategies both for the emotion, and here's an example of a young person talking about, in a debate situation, anger and how she dealt with it. So she said, you know, she learned to, like when people would just say dumb stuff like off topic and interrupt and be rude, that would just make me mad, just want to say forget it. But I didn't, I still did it, she still kept going. I learned that sometimes you have to overlook what people say, just as long as I'm still on topic, then just worry about me, you know? So she just kept going. She said, um, don't worry about their saying, walk away, take a break, count to 10, talk about something else. So she had different strategies that she used to help her get through, not just to want to say forget it, but instead to keep going. And when asked how did she learn that, it was overhearing actually a leader talk to another youth. When another student got mad, our leader just told the student to leave, calm down, walk around the block, come back with a better attitude, overlook what that person says, just don't listen to them, keep going with your ideas. And again, this is in the debate context, it depends on the context. But it, again, I think sometimes we underestimate a simple thing, just overhearing some kind of strategies. Often young people don't have some basic strategies, they haven't heard them, and they're interested to pick up on them, as I was as a kid. Um, here's a leader talking about noticing um, the leader was saying that they notice when they try to keep tabs on that. Like Reed said, when do you interfere? You know, when do you interrupt and when do you let them be frustrated? But it's like, get, let them go through some frustration. But if they're hugely frustrated, I'll suggest they take a break or try doing something else for a little while, or I'll sit with them, try to work through it, or I'll pair them with someone who's more experienced. So the leaders has all these strategies and helps introduce them and helps the youth try out different things depending and seeing what's working for them and in a given situation. Third thing that we heard from the leaders and the youth is to really encourage that problem solving. So not to tell them the solution, right? But it's the encouraging the problem solving to persist even though you're frustrated, even though you're upset or worried or feel like maybe you can't do it. What are the things I know, you know, I believe in you and what are some ways that you can try. So here's an interesting example of when a young person actually working on a journalism um, and that magazine that Reed mentioned, when the leader told us we're gonna do a magazine, you know, I hate writing, I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. And I'm like, I don't think I'm gonna be able to do the program because you know, I've never been good at writing and I don't think I'll make a good enough article for this. So, the youth said, but the leader, she said, she's like, no, you could try, you could try. She told me, you just need to get away from your fear. So she's naming the fear. Maybe you're not actually afraid of writing, but you're just stuck on the fact, oh no, I suck at writing, I suck at writing, so that's why you're scared of doing the project. That's what kind of got me excited. And then once I started working on it and looking into the topic, interviewing people, that's when I got more excited and I want to finish in everything. So, so this, what they often call the reframing, right, or reappraisal of the situation and of their own feeling like, okay, you think you're afraid, but is it possible another way to look at it and to, and actually it got the team to totally turn it around and think, oh, this is kind of cool, maybe there is, it's like a challenge that I could deal with. So um, again, these are, I'm giving just some examples, but there's a rich set of examples and we wanted to actually give 
you an example to talk over and see what you would do. So this was one of the ones from our set of interviews. Um, and actually both the leader and the youth independently mentioned this situation. So it'd be great if at your table, you could read through it, the situation of a young filmmaker, again, want, reaching an impasse and wanting to quit. And what would you do? It's not that there's a right answer. I think it's really to get a variety of different ideas going, what you would do in that situation. So if you can read through on your own, maybe take a few minutes on your own to think, just think to yourself, write a couple, and then um, we'll start to, you can talk as a group, and then we'll wrap up after about 15 minutes. So we had a team of people, scouts, listening to really interesting array of suggestions and thoughts, including just really thinking about what is Ali feeling, starting there, naming it ourselves, and then this idea of really recognizing, helping her talk about it, validating how she's feeling. So there's a difference between validating how she's feeling and what you do about it, right? So you can, it's understandable that you feel like you wanna quit, but that doesn't mean you have to quit, right? And so some people were talking about, it was interesting about both, um, some people talked about giving her the space to feel that way. Like they said, some people need to cry like when you have a lot of emotion and then that's okay. So I appreciated that. <laughs> and uh, an interesting thing was to think about how to, you might want to jump to the solution for her about what to do, but this idea of helping her brainstorm possibilities, has she done something in the past? This idea of bringing in peers, has someone else, this feeling often that teens have that people talked about were um, that you guys were talking about was sometimes they feel like they're the only one. So sharing your experience where you were in a similar situation, how did you get through it? Um, but also where their peers have had encountered difficulties and how did they get through it? Reframing the situation. So this idea that <laughs> over here they were talking about in another one that it can see it as a challenge, a creative challenge and that Often some of the most creative work comes out when it's not, when you encounter something that isn't how it's planned. So what could be a creative way to finish the film that wasn't how you planned, but it's what's, what are creative solutions for going around it? So, and actually in this situation, the teen was thinking, they helped her through to think about um, the leader talk to her about what are you thinking? Actually the youth said, well maybe I'm just gonna make a really short trailer instead of the whole film. And actually then the leader was like, well, but I think you have a lot of stuff. So again, even through that, they were working through this brainstorming, what are different possibilities? And, um, but, uh, and not that it was the one right way. I think the leader would have loved to have all the ideas here, I think, at that moment. That's why she was talking about this as a dilemma she had and she was talking about how she would want to deal with it in the future but actually independently when we interviewed the youth she said that um, it actually really helped her it was a real learning experience and she made the film and she was so proud of it and she realized that she could get through situations like this so it was a huge really did become this learning opportunity from wanting to quit to actually being proud of the work that she did and that she overcame this situation so, and then we also heard from the tables that sometimes it's really hard, those of you who are working with leaders and sometimes volunteers who haven't had a lot of time to think about this process. So it can be challenging. And Reed said to make sure to mention that that's often the process of, again, and that came out in some of the discussion, recognizing and being able to label your own emotions. And we've heard leaders who really start to be able to do that and then to show how you manage them. So the rich, rich, set of conversations. And I think that leads really well into what Lisa is gonna talk about. So we, I was really focused a lot on the youth active learning, how through their experience they were learning, and as Reed talked about, and the supports. And then Lisa's gonna get more depth into the broader, what are the program structures, and um, over time, how do all these things work together to support the broader array of social emotional learning skills.